don't you just hate it when your favorite shows get really, really lame? Do you hear something? It's a buzzing. Maybe it's a flying beehive. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows that jumped the shark. I once saw the Fonzie do something on TV that just might do the trick. For this list, we'll be focusing on previously well-loved TV shows that were ruined thanks to a ridiculous or out-of-character moment. I was just trying to be funny, but we are going to have an addition to the family. We've disqualified shows that overstayed their welcomes or lost quality over time. <laughs> Number 10. Lois and Clark Hook Up Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman Well, we're getting married in four days, and I've never been happier in my life, and every time that things are going great between us, something happens. And I just know that something bad is going to happen to mess up our wedding. I just know it. When a show banks on the will-they-or-won't-they dynamic, does anybody keep watching once they get together? Uncanny how that works. <laughs> the writers of this show tried everything to keep Soups and his intrepid lady reporter friend apart, from long dormant Nazis to ancient curses. A curse? Yes, go ahead. Cast upon your love centuries ago by a wicked, vindictive soul who was bound and determined to destroy your love forever. But the series Kryptonite was definitely when Clark finally married Lois, or at least what he thought was Lois. She was actually a frog-eating clone who was trying to kill the president. We already got to the president. He's a clone too. Number 9. Marissa Shoots Trey, The O.C. In the finale of an already dismal second season, sad little rich girl Marissa finds her would-be rapist Trey duking it out with his brother. Please! Please stop it! You're killing him! Seeing no alternative, she shoots Trey to save Ryan, as you do. What you say, oh, that you only meant well, but of you did. Though he doesn't die, Marissa's expelled from school the next season. You almost killed another kid. I don't even hear a hint of remorse in your voice. Because I don't have any. She's never setting foot in this school again. That'll teach her. While this certainly shook things up in the OC, the ratings barely picked up, even when they killed off Marissa altogether. The show ended after season four. Baby, I've been here before. Number eight, his name isn't Michael Vaughn, alias. I love you, Sid. That's why I need to tell you something. Just so there's no secrets between us. Okay. Whatever it is, I can handle it. Just don't tell me you're a bad guy. Wanting to mix things up a little, the writers of this spy thriller threw some peppers into the gumbo and revealed that Shotgun wasn't who he said he was. What are you telling me? Well, for starters, my name isn't Michael Vaughn. But when the artist formerly known as Vaughn begins to explain the significance of all this, he is interrupted by a car crash, then credits. Although this revelation was meant to fuel new storylines, Alias ended with an abbreviated fifth and final season. Number seven, The Great Gazoo, The Flintstones. Now then, I suppose the usual amenities are in order. I am the Great Gazoo, and I thank you for rescuing me. Cause you know, aliens, cavemen, that whole connection. This pointless addition to the Flintstones' final season appeared in 11 episodes, although no one's sure why. Only seen by Fred, Barney, and the children of the series, this pompous pint-sized spaceman was banished to prehistoric Earth. My dear fellow, I'm not only undependable, but I'm a bit of a kook. That's why I'm here, remember? I'm being punished. With him, he brought a storyline about trying to return to his home planet, an arc that was not resolved before the show's cancellation. Do you think you'll be back? I don't know, Vaughn. Might be better if he wasn't. Look at all the trouble he caused us. Number six, Cousin Oliver, the Brady Bunch. Here we are. Oliver! Hey, Oliver! Oh, hi, honey. Hi. Welcome to your new family. Not many TV characters are so useless they get an entire trope named after them. They said, wherever I go, terrible things happen, and they're right. The namesake of Cousin Oliver Syndrome, this eight-year-old Jinx was brought into the Brady Bunch to add some youth to the cast in the series' fifth season. Well, I guess that was an accident, too. How come we're having all these accidents only since Oliver moved in? Yeah, I like Oliver, but he's a jinx. 
But when he tainted the final six episodes, most viewers wished this mini John Denver would leave on a jet plane, bus, or the back of a stray dog and not come back again. Okay, I'll go. But you're all doing this at your own risk. <laughs> we'll take our chances. Okay. Number five, season two and beyond, Heroes. I'm shark bait. Oh, you're gonna do fine. This show had a fantastic superhero premise, but lost all momentum in season two when Peter, the most important and powerful character, suddenly got amnesia after he spent the exciting first season discovering his abilities. What's your name? I don't know. This, of course, came after that whole save the cheerleader, save the world plot didn't really go anywhere. All Heroes did after that was pile on more and more characters, rehash storyline after storyline, and drift into cheesy soap opera territory. And this all came from you, Maya. From what's inside that extraordinary body of yours. Number four, time travel, lost. <laughs> this series started off with a bang, or a crash, and had viewers rabid to discover the secrets of the mystifying island. Polar bears don't usually live in the jungle. Spot on. But it didn't take long for things to unravel, with a little help from a writer strike. Whether or not you're down with polar bears and smoke monsters, the show's increasing overuse of time travel and flash sideways in later seasons was a red flag. I think it may have dislodged us. Dislodged us from what? With two different storylines in two different time periods, the series was confusing to casual viewers. Add erratic time jumps to one of those plots, and well, you're lost. Oh, what, what, what's going on? Don't even think about it, Hurley. Don't even think it, Hurley, hey! Damn it! Number three, winning the lottery, Roseanne. What lottery? <laughs> the lottery, the Illinois State Lottery! It's the biggest one in the history of Illinois! It's 108 million dollars! The final season of this blue-collar comedy begins with the titular comedian striking it rich in the lottery to the tune of $108 million. And this storyline completely changed the nature of the show. Out were the everyday struggles of the average American family, and in were visits from tabloid journalists, first ladies, and princes. How do you think the lottery is going to change your lives? Well, not much. We're probably just going to be the same people we always were. Yeah, only happy. Spoiler alert. In the finale, they revealed the entire show was made up and Dan was dead. Bummer. Let's tell Dan! No! Number two, it was all a dream, Dallas. <laughs> An overhaul of the creative team at the end of season eight coincided with one of the show's popular characters, Bobby Ewing, being killed off. The next year did so poorly, Patrick Duffy was convinced to reprise his role in a season 9 finale shocker. Good morning. When confused fans tuned into the season 10 premiere, they learned that the entire previous season had been a dream. You look like you just saw a ghost. For a minute I thought I did. That's right, the whole season. That's a lot of hours of your life you're not getting back. It's over. None of that happened. Before we launch our top pick to the Sharks, here are a few honorable mentions. Yeah, it's kind of weird spending our last moments together bent over a table with our naked butts in there. That's how I always hoped it'd be. Ryan, look out! I guess now is as good a time as any. <laughs> Number one, Fonzie jumps the shark, happy days. Shark, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Stupid, yes, also dumb, but it's something I gotta do. The top spot has to go to the show that spawned the entire trope. My cousin, the one and only Fonz, 
That's me. Got discovered by a talent scout at Arnold's, and he's going to Hollywood. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Set in the third part of an already questionable Hollywood arc, this episode is cited as the moment Happy Days quality began to slip. Eager to impress his fans, the fawn straps on a pair of water skis and literally, yes, literally, jumps over a shark. Inspiring the phrase of the day. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite, or least favorite, jumping the shark moment? Fez, you jumped that shark and you're not even wet! <laughs> For more trope-ridden top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. We'll never stop the Simpsons. Have no fears, we've got stories for years, like Marge becomes a robot.